lifestyle, then this is what your life will look like. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. And what Jesus says is, in order to be a follower of Christ, you will do three things. And if you'll look at this first slide here, Jesus says in verse 23, if anyone, anyone would come after me, he must three things. One, deny himself. Two, take up his cross. And three, follow me. Let's look at these three descriptions of a follower. Uh, first, the first description that Jesus gives for those who believe and repent is that a follower will deny himself. And of course, denying self means a willingness to let go of, of our desires, of especially our selfish desires. We're no longer in charge. God is. He determines how we spend our time, our energy, our money. And when there's a conflict between what we want and what God's word says, God's word wins. This matter of self-denial, as with everything else God calls us to, in this matter, Jesus is our supreme example. And I'd like to share the example found in Philippians chapter 2 of Jesus denying himself. In Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 5, uh, uh, Paul writes, Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. He's our, he's our example. He's our model. This is what your attitude should be. Jesus, being the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. But he made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness. And being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Here we are reminded how Jesus denied himself. The first, the first thing that we're going to do is, if we're going to be a Christian is we need to deny self. And that's what Jesus did. He denied his godhood so that he could come to earth and he could serve us, and he could suffer, and he could die. You and I, we're going to look uh, later at an example of how we can deny ourselves. But let's move on to the second description of a Christian. Jesus says, if anyone would come after me, he must take up his cross daily. Now, sometimes I'll, I hear people say, if they're facing a, a difficult situation in their life, they'll say, well, it's just a cross that I have to bear. Um, that's not what Jesus is talking about here when he says, take up your cross daily. It's not a hardship that you're facing. What Jesus is talking about here is dying. He's talking about dying. As we know, death on the cross was a common form of execution in Jesus' day. And what would happen is a prisoner would be commanded, as they were going to be crucified, to take their cross and carry it to the site of their execution and there they would be uh, executed on a cross. And so when Jesus commanded the disciples to take up their cross daily, it was a command to die, to die to self. And so I think it's very interesting that this second aspect of being what it means to be a Christian takes the first aspect and just magnifies it. As a Christian, what it means to believe and to repent, it means to deny self. But let's take it one step further. No, not just deny self, but die to yourself but die to yourself and again we're going to look at an example of someone who died to themselves uh, just a little bit later but let me just say that, that I believe that dying to self as hard as it's been over the last 2,000 years I don't think it's ever been any harder we, we live in a culture where we're told that we should be able to have it our own way and have it our own way 24 hours a day whatever we want whenever we want it we should be able to have it. And so these words of dying to self is a pretty hard pill for Christians to swallow, especially in this culture. But I also want to say, before we leave this point, that while dying to self is, is extremely difficult, it is also extremely rewarding. Uh, Malcolm uh, Muggeridge was a British journalist, and he became a Christian apologist. He was an atheist, who encountered Mother Teresa, and through his encounter with her, he was converted to Christianity. And he ended up becoming a Christian apologist. And he said this. He said, I can say that I never really cared to live until I chose to die. For this discovery, I am beholden to Jesus. So we are called to die to ourselves, and that is very difficult. But there is also great reward in it. And any who have truly sacrificed their will and their desires for the Lord's 
knows what it means to be blessed when you're sacrificing and you're denying self and you're dying to self. Someone else has once said that it cost Jesus his life so that we could be saved and it cost us our lives if he's going to be Lord. If Jesus is going to be Lord of our life, we have to die to self. The third description of a Christian that Jesus uh, gives here is he says, if anyone would come after me, he must follow me. He must follow me. The, the verb tense in that follow me is a present continuous action. It's not just something that we, we pray when we're 12 years old at, at, at Christian summer camp when we ask Jesus to, to forgive our sin and then we're done. To be a Christian means to follow him every day, all day long. It's a constant action. Following Jesus is something that we do in every conversation we have, in every, in every decision we have to make, in every encounter we have. We have to choose whether to follow him or not. And so as we look at these three things that describe what it means to, to believe and to repent, we see that being a Christian is much more than just believing the right things in our head. It's much more than just believing the right things in our head. Jesus is saying here, it's a matter of obeying him. It's a matter of following him. Being a Christian involves much more than just learning lessons, going to a Sunday school class, reading your Bible, hearing a sermon. It's much more than learning and head knowledge. Being a Christian is, is not really like being a student. It's much more like being a, an apprentice where the apprentice learns by living with and working with his teacher. So this third, the, these, these descriptions of what it means to, to believe and repent means this, that if you meet someone who's religious, if you meet someone who says they believe in God and the Bible, but they don't follow Jesus, they don't obey Jesus, then they're not a Christian. Because if you're going to be a follower of Christ, you're going to deny yourself, take up your cross daily, and follow him. And if you have somebody who says the right things and believes the right things, but doesn't do the right things, they're not a follower of Christ. I talked about an example that we would look at. The example is the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul truly did die to self and sought to follow Jesus. This is what the Apostle Paul, this is how the Apostle Paul describes his believing and his repenting. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, just write that down in your bulletin somewhere. You can look it up later. I'm going to read it for you now. Paul explains this verse in his own words. And this is what Paul says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. As I read these words of Paul's in Galatians 2, think about Luke 9. Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live for the glory of the one who died for me. Paul died to self so he could follow Christ. Before Paul met Jesus, Paul thought that you had to, to be good in order to be loved by God. You had to do all the right things in order to be loved by God. And if you did enough good things, that God would love you and be pleased with you. But when Paul encountered Jesus, he died to his old way of thinking, and he became an apostle of grace. Paul went from teaching that you had to earn forgiveness to teaching that Jesus earned the forgiveness for you by his death on the cross. And in Paul making that switch... In Paul denying his old way of living and following Jesus, Paul gave up all of his old friends. Paul gave up all of, his, all of his power, all of his prestige. He gave up his position as one of the leading Pharisees of his generation. He gave it all up. He died to those things so that he could be a follower of Jesus. So this begs the question, as we turn to ourselves. What ways of thinking or living did we have before we encountered Christ that, that are old ways, that are not God's ways, that are not Christ's ways? 